also implement it. Vi har tidligere i dag besøg her i studiet af Ungarns ambassadør i Danmark. Han mener, at det internationale samfund i store træk misforstår hans land. Jeg startede med at spørge, om den ungarske regering vil efterkomme EU's henstillinger. Good afternoon, or good evening rather. Uh, of course the Hungarian government will comply with the wishes of the EU. We said it from the beginning, that as soon as we receive specific legal argumentation, we will examine the criticized aspects and we will make amendments if necessary. The problem was that until now we received only general political criticism and political views. Therefore we didn't react. Now that we received, we know exactly what the problem is. Now we are ready to uh, do it. As you surely know, yesterday there was a meeting between Prime Minister Orban and Mr. Barroso in Brussels. Yeah. Uh, it lasted more than two hours, so it was quite a substantial uh, meeting. And as a result, it now seems that in almost all problems, uh, almost all problems will be solved. And uh, only three minor issues remains that uh, where, where the opinions are still uh, uh, far ahead. Right. But, but I'd like to know, Mr. Ambassador, do you think the criticism brought forward by the EU, do you think it's fair? Do, do you think the European community has a point when it points it um, towards Hungary and say, look, you have a problem there, you have a democratic problem? I think that uh, uh, the European Commission has every right to examine each member country's legislation. So we have no problems with that. We also admit that it is their right to intervene as soon as they see that in a member state uh, uh, there is legislation that violates the EU treaty. Uh, the problem until now was that we we uh, felt that uh, the criticism is too general mm. it's coming from everywhere at the same time and it's it's it seemed like a campaign against hungary yeah and, and based on rather uh, uh, ideological base but but we've seen a lot of hungarian intellectuals let me just mention the philosopher agnes heller or one of your writers called georgi konrad who've been writing articles for Western newspapers saying, look, we have, or the Hungarian government has created an anti-democratic monster. This is sort of the view that's been going around in Europe. What's your take on that? What's your take on Hungarian intellectuals denouncing their own government in that way? Well, of course, we are not happy. But uh, you don't have to take these opinions at face value. Both of these mentioned uh, persons, uh, they are, they are uh, famous intellectuals also in Hungary, but both of them belong uh, to the sympathizers of the Hungarian Liberal Party. This Liberal Party uh, lost its support totally and during the last election in uh, 2010 they didn't even get into the parliament. So this is a viewpoint that... Uh, it's, so it's, it's domestic politics? It's absolutely domestic politics and uh, I, I, I understand them because uh, they, are, they don't like uh, that Hungary has taken uh, another direction. So therefore uh, they are very critical. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they are right in their critics. No, I understand that. But if we move outside of Hungary, we've also seen prominent European politicians, the former Belgian Prime Minister Giffa Hofstadt or the French philosopher Bernard-Henri Livier saying, look, there seems to be a problem in Hungary. Uh, Giffa Hofstadt has said Hungary now poses a democratic threat to European values. How does that ring in your ears? We uh, are afraid. Uh, we are aware of these uh, opinions. These opinions were also voiced uh, in the, the European Parliament last week. And at the European Parliament, we could have seen uh, clearly a clear division line, an ideological division line, where the Conservative uh, EPP uh, were supporting uh, Viktor Orbán's government, while the uh, centre left uh, criticising harshly. I think that. There are three main reasons for this criticism. One, that uh, these changes in Hungary were so swift. Mm. That is not understandable for many. The second one is that um, this is the, the uh, ideological uh, division line. And the third one, that, the, uh, that an unprecedented, that the present Hungarian government has an unprecedented, almost unprecedented, two-third majority in the Hungarian parliament. And there is a fear, and especially among uh, these uh, liberal intellectuals, that with such 
uh, a big majority, uh, this kind of big majority can be misused. Exactly, sir. And you're striking on the very point I was just going to ask you, because I've seen some of the critics saying that Prime Minister Orban, with his two-third majority, is now openly putting his party loyals on top of various national institutions, in fact, the entire system. Why this procedure? Because to critics, this seems like a very grim reminiscence of the communist days when party loyals were just placed on top of everything. Well, uh, to call somebody a party loyal, it's a subjective thing. Uh, I admit that the opponents of the Hungarian government, uh, they don't like uh, these appointments. But uh, to call all the persons who, who were uh, nominated by, by the Prime Minister Orban to these positions uh, party loyalists is, I think, uh, unjust. And uh, therefore, uh, these critics, uh, I, I, I think, don't go too far. Of course, uh, I can't deny, but also you can't deny that uh, uh, no government in the world would like to appoint uh, to, to uh, uh, important positions somebody who is openly against them. So not, not, not even in this country, I think. So in that aspect, of course, uh, you can argue uh, uh, sometimes that uh, they are right. But I must uh, repeat that uh, this is not uh, beyond doubt that uh, these people are, uh, are supporters uh, of, of Fidesz. But it does call into suspicion what many people, many critics are saying at least, that Hungary is in the process of becoming something akin to Russia, Russia under Putin, that is, an autocratic state with a rubber stamp parliament. Again, that's a viewpoint, but how do you respond to that? Uh, it's a complete nonsense, I must, uh, I must tell you. Uh, and this, uh, this, I read also such opinions, but uh, it, uh, they are absolutely not true. If uh, there, is, uh, there are politicians who can be uh, uh, called as uh, Viktor Orban's idols, they are rather Charles de Gaulle, uh, Margaret Thatcher or Helmut Kohl. Mm. Uh, all these politicians uh, took over uh, under very, very uh, difficult circumstances and had to, uh, uh, had to bring in, had to uh, initiate uh, huge changes in order to put their country back on track. This is what the Orban government is doing in Hungary. So uh, uh, I, I don't see uh, any kind of reminiscence of, uh, of, okay. of Putin. And finally, Mr. Ambassador, because there are lots of... Um lots of criticism being thrown at Hungary, but one of the points that's been uh, mentioned by, again, international critics is that Roma, Sinti and Jews, that is, ethnic and religious minorities in Hungary, are now being persecuted by right-wing extremists and that the government is doing very little to stop that. Again, your comment on that? I think that uh, these, uh, these are also unjust uh, uh, opinions. For example, uh, last Saturday, there was a mass demonstration uh, for the Orman government in Budapest. More than 400,000 people uh, took part in that demonstration, among them also Romas. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you uh, imagine a situation when there would be uh, discrimination against the Romas and still Romas uh, would uh, go along with the supporters of the Orban government if that was true? But the chairman of the Jewish community in Budapest has said that things are looking a lot more grim now than they used to five years ago, that there is a rise in anti-Semitism. I admit that there are also such opinions uh, among the Hungarian uh, Jewish community, but there are also uh, contrary opinions. The problem is that uh, I, I think, uh, and I tell you honestly, that in the, in the international media always the negative aspects are taken out.